The Fanatec McLaren wheel is really, really good. It's done me no wrong, it's done everything I ever needed from a mainline wheel. So naturally, I'm replacing it. My aim is to build a GT style wheel that can do everything the McLaren wheel did and a bit more, but with added luxuries. In the Fanatec world, this means combining the podium hub, advanced paddle module and endurance button module to form a top of the range Fanatec platform, which I can then pair with a GT style rim. Everything you see now is included in the Podium Steering Wheel Fanatec GT World Challenge bundle. In the EU region at least, this bundle costs around 530 euros, excluding VAT, and gives you around 10% off all of the components compared to buying everything separately, and contains everything seen on and including this wheel. There are plenty of different bundles in the shop that use this podium hub, paddle and module combination and those core platform components are the real points of interest in this video. So let's see what we get in this bundle and first things first, box time. There's no doubt about it, this is a passion purchase for me as I could happily stick with the McLaren wheel forever but the fact is that sometimes you just want to turn up the quality, it's pleasing for the soul. It brings me great satisfaction to just look at all these boxes and have this kit just waiting to be assembled and I've got great expectations for the end result. When I punched the checkout button I was swapping some hard earned cash in return for something that hopefully turns out a little bit special and makes me feel even cooler playing pretend race cars. Starting from square one is a quick release. This component is an included part of a podium hub. You don't buy it separately in this situation, so the €200 Euro price for the Podium Hub actually includes this €100 Euro quick release. This is a widely useful component, and although there's a new quick release layout coming sometime over the horizon, it's probably still ages away and it's not going to make this obsolete all of a sudden either. All good to me. And then we have the Podium Hub itself. So wheels such as the McLaren and Formula line have got circuitry built into them to be able to operate the wheel. But with the podium system, this component alone contains that control centre, it is the brains of the operation. Underneath the black cover is a modular plug system which is where our paddle module will connect, and on the underside of the hub is a USB-C connector to which our button module will connect. The hub looks great with the gold coating and sets a good tone, so far I'm able to recognise a tangible step up in the seriousness of the podium line and we're only just getting going. Now onto the paddle module, this is where our gear shifters, secondary paddles and clutch paddles will live and given the thousands of times I'll be nudging and clicking them, the quality of this component in particular is going to have a big influence on the end result. Now this is a definite wow item just to look at, the crispness of the carbon paddles and the precision of the cuts are brilliant. The material finish on the paddles is superb, you get two styles, one of which has a lustrous gold thread accent which is simply great. I didn't expect to be so enamoured with the paddle module, but there we go. Fact is, you could bring this module to the pub and easily convince your mates that they're worth like two grand or something. I'm saying you could, but don't. It's a bit of a shame that these paddles are going to be largely hidden by our next item. The endurance button module is the final piece of the underlying podium hub assembly and will provide me with shift lights, a disgusting amount of buttons and dials inset into the centre of our final assembled product. This unit is sandwiched between the podium hub and the wheel rim and has a carbon fibre front plate which is always a pleasure to see and feel. The module will provide a few functional improvements such as those indicator lights and the elongated display which has room to fit live telemetry and metrics such as brake bias, things that are important to me but my McLaren wheel couldn't do by itself. Looking down and checking out the readings is going to bring me great satisfaction before I look up again and see myself heading for the grass. Although I won't be using it in the end product in the later half of this video, the rim included in the bundle is worth looking at. Feels really nice and does do justice to the rest of the bundle's components. This is a Club Sport 320 rim and it's a lever effect, but there are an assortment of wheel bundles with different styles and materials and price wise they do seem right on target. They're actually cheaper than their real equivalents from Momo or OMP for example. And if I was just after a classic round wheel, this would be the end of my search. When assembled, the whole bundle is a very pleasing combination and price wise I do feel as if I've got my money's worth. After assembling it all I feel like I understand the point and place of the podium components a bit more now. 
I didn't pay it all that much attention previously as I was perfectly happy, but as with all passionate projects and pastimes, the slow creep up the equipment chain is inevitable, irresistible. Whilst I love my McLaren wheel dearly, as I switched between them in the process of testing and exploring everything, the difference in the way they felt was pretty clear. The McLaren wheel is wonderful, but it can sometimes feel a bit toy-like, maybe a little bit plasticky, at least compared to this, but given the price gap between them, that's expected. I'd be annoyed if it didn't feel indulgent by comparison. I'm indulging my cash after all. Podium means flagship product, and I can certainly say that in terms of fit and finish, the core components as seen here are tremendously impressive and a distinct cut above what I've had before. The hub, paddle and button modules fitted together look quite formidable, and I'm now looking forward to the final result when I find the perfect open top wheel to stick on it. More on that to come. While I wait for my third party wheel rim to arrive, however, I've got to give the bundle a spin as is and check it's all working great. And once I'd read through the quick guides and updated both my wheelbase drivers and firmwares, it was all up and running. This is where you catch an initial glimpse of a broad feature set which allows you to set rev light limits and module options from within the software. Just feels like a fully unlocked system. It might just be a mere cherry on top in terms of what it does for your racing, but cycling through the telemetry pages on the button module gives me quite a bit of joy. This is one of those features that lets you know that you're slipping into the abyss of sim racing gadgetry. For once I'm actually all for it. The data you can see through the display depends entirely on the simulator you're playing. For example, ACC allows you to see tyre temps real time, iRacing doesn't. Whereas iRacing does share things like brake balance and fuel and so on. As a rule, don't expect the button module to be able to access any telemetry you don't already have access to whilst driving. Check compatibility with your chosen simulator to make sure you're not going to be disappointed. So let's actually use the thing. In operation, those magnetic action paddle shifters are very binary in their positioning. The paddles give you a pretty stern kashunk. If you own a McLaren wheel, then think punchier than that, but just not quite as loud. You certainly won't be pressing it by accident, let's just say that. As I said earlier, the shifters are probably the most used part of the wheel, so they have to be good, and I'm not disappointed. I've taken to using gloves recently and the large GT style paddles are easy to locate. The shift action is very clear through the skin of a racewear that I now use. A lot of you use gloves, so I understand now the need for a very crisp shift action. And if these paddles were crisps, you'd be talking triple cooked kettle chips. Having proper shift lights and secondary indicators for things like the pit speed limiter, traction control and ABS activation adds to a theatre. And after spending a while without any shift lights, having them back in this format is really nice. You can even edit the colours of each LED for each given situation, which is a nice touch. If you want all pink rev lights, go for it. If you want a spectrum of colours in no particular order whenever you set that pit lane speed limiter, that's fine too. This is just a nice touch, and again, in sim racing, customization goes such a long way to making people feel pleased with their choices, and discovering that I could do this had me delighted. It's a little things, you know? As an assembled bundle, I'm really pleased with how the wheel feels. It's undoubtedly premium feeling, that's for sure. But make no mistake, I consider this to be a way to get everything that the McLaren wheel gave me, just in a higher grade package. The McLaren wheel remains a mighty wheel to start with, with so much functionality, with its dual clutch paddles, instruments and 300mm diameter. It's because I liked the McLaren wheel so much that I sought out the podium bundle with all of its trimmings. So now my search begins for an open top GT style wheel to top it all off and take the place of this round stock rim. And this is where Fanatec starts shooting themselves right in the foot. Due to the button module's design, you have to be careful of your choice of wheel because not all wheels can safely clear all of the buttons and dials when mounted. The Cube GT Pro Zero rim was my initial choice, but it won't fit over the rotary dials at the bottom because they collide with them, at least not without a spacer. Failing that, my next choice was this OMP wheel which I was intending to modify, but it doesn't actually clear the buttons in the bottom quarter without a spacer. Not even every Fanatec wheel is compatible with a module, some of them will clash like this. Fanatec themselves don't yet sell an open top wheel, and that's a missed opportunity, I want to buy a rim like this. So I've ordered a turn racing wheel which should do the trick and be fully compatible, but that's going to take a few days to get here from the US. 
When I ordered the bundle, I accidentally ordered another one of these Club Sport 320 rims. It's going spare, I'm unsupervised, I have no patience and I have a bad idea. So the stage is set for something stupid. And voila, one nasty slapdash open top wheel to satisfy my urge to ruin some and it will do as an open top rim until my real products from turn racing and cube controls arrive, which should be around about a week from now, and the final decision on which rim works best with the podium module will take place. For now, everything you've seen up to that point has been a good old poke around in the Fanatec podium kit, which is the backbone of this wheel build. I love the podium components, they do give you a quality feel, I just wish the button module was a little less restrictive when it comes to wheel mounting but as it's a replica of a real object, I suppose we didn't really have much choice there. The Club Sport Universal Hub is also an option if I didn't want to go down this road and it's got a lot of flexibility where the podium module has none, but you know how it goes, you want what you want. I've got to wait until those bits arrive, but for now it's to be continued. As always, everything seen in this video is linked in the description, please give them a click if you're shopping for them. Thanks to those who have done so in the past, you are giving me a great boost by doing so. Like and subscribe to catch future dumb stuff, and I'll be back with a conclusion and some final build thoughts soon. Cheers!